So um, I want to tell you about uh, Alice in Wonderland and uh, um, uh, yeah, th there was a story that had this girl in there and, and there's a rabbit and, um, and, and then, then there's the, this cat. Oh, wait, 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 I forgot these guys. Start again, please. Huh? Um, uh, oh, I give up. Oh, sorry. Sorry. That's what you don't want. And you want to teach them at the beginning with storytelling, um, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, kindergarten. No, first None of grade. us. Cool. What did I do wrong? Um, you, you started it wrong. Like you didn't introduce <laughs> it, right? Well, introduction. Are you making fun of me? Are you making fun of me? No, not okay. at all. Absolutely not at all. Uh, no, I'm showing you how what students do if they don't know how to present properly. Okay. You were speaking low. I wasn't projecting loud at all. What else? You weren't confident. I was shaking. You weren't confident. I wasn't confident whatsoever. You were holding your poster sideways. I held it sideways. Like no eye contact? I made, I think I made one eye contact and that was it. You looked at the floor. I looked at the floor. You were fidgeting. You dropped your fidgeting. storyboard. What? Or your story. What word did I repeat a lot? Um, sorry. Um, um, um. And like. I didn't do like this time because I get into the habit when I hear like. <clears throat> Let me tell you about Alice in Wonderland. Story by Lewis Carroll. Lewis. He told the story one day of a little girl named Alice who fell asleep at the base of a tree. She had been reading until she was awakened rabbit, a white rabbit, who was hurrying across the field going, it's late, it's late. It woke her right up to the point that she followed the rabbit and fell down a hole. Now, what did I do different? You use your hands to tell a story too? Gestures, proper gestures. Did I do this? There was a rabbit, <laughs> and the rabbit came down with the watch, and, and you'll see kids go out of the way with gestures that don't mean anything. Well, that's the Shakespeare thing. To be or not to be, that is the question, whether it is enough in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to, to be or not to be, that is the question. So you have to teach them proper gestures. You have to teach them how to stand properly and that they don't do the fidgeting. I was doing what I call the storytelling dance, going back and forth, the back and forth, because that's no confidence. You had your hand up for something else. I was going to say you used different tones. Totally. I used my tone of voice. I raised it. I lowered it. I modified it. Prosody. I see. What? Prosody. <laughs> like that, right? It's <laughs> a good word. And it's always cool to learn new words. Well, Alice in Wonderland. Twas brillig, and the slithy toes that gyre and gibble in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoves, and the mom rats out, uh, out grave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that clench. Beware the jub jub bird, and, ah, wow, I forgot the word, and fear the fumorous bandersnatch. Now, there's a difference. He made up words. He loved words. And it was actually a poem. And if you go for the translation, you find out what everything is. Twas brillig. I never knew what twas brillig was. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> that makes the difference. You got to understand yourself before you can read it to other people. I just did this in performance on Friday at a showcase. But I had to know the translation of what it was. Same thing with plays. I did a play called The Indian Wants the Bronx. I spoke in Hindi the entire play. <laughs> I had to learn Hindi. One of the nuns at uh, College White Plains taught, uh, was my coach my, for that, one of the nuns. And, uh, but I also had to learn the play in English so I understood what it was being said. That's your job, so that you could teach the kids really well. Here's, we're gonna work on fables today. And what we're gonna do is this. You're gonna get some Aesop fables, we're gonna break it into groups. You need to read it, and you need to find out because what you did especially was that you were decoding the book into images. You took images that gave you 
your way of, into the book, and that's a great way to look at how you break down the story. What are the themes? What are the major elements? Because when you're telling a story, if you try to tell a Harry Potter book, you're going to be telling that book for how many hours? <laughs> okay? You're going to, and because one of the things, and again, what she does is she revisits, she keeps bringing back, she reviews information from previous books. Not every author does. Lewis Carroll, that wasn't part of their style. He imagined that you'd read every book. In this, I want you to work on, in small groups, fables. You don't have to memorize it word for word. A storyteller doesn't memorize word for word. New York City Department of Education used to make students stand like this, memorize a story word for word, and they would judge that way. It had no life. It was boring. It was by rote. It was, again, the rote way of learning. They also gave them no personality of their own. Everybody know the story of how the rabbit um, got, its, uh, got its tail? No, oh, oh, it's an easy fable. Rabbit and fox were jealous of each other because they both had beautiful long tails. Fox thought that his tail was far prettier than rabbit's. Rabbit thought his tail. Ah, oh, fox had nothing on him. Well, one day. Fox was trotting down back up from the lake. It was going towards winter time and the evenings were cold. And he had caught on his tail a long string of fish. A rabbit who was greedy as well. What? Fox, how did you get all those fish? That would feed all of my family and friends. Fox thought. I can get back. Rabbit, I will tell you how to catch these fish. Take your long, beautiful tail, because you knew how to flatter him, and put it in the lake this evening. Rabbit says, what? Put it in the lake? Put it in the lake, and the fish will swarm to it. Now, Rabbit looked, and he said, I want that much fish. So he did, <coughs> as Fox told him, and Fox laughed and laughed and laughed as he went back, back to his den. Goes down, sat down, and waited, and waited, and he fell asleep. And in the morning, when he woke up, and he tried to get up, the lake water was frozen solid. It had gotten colder. And he was stuck in the ice. His tail was stuck down here in the ice, and he's trying to, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and he couldn't get out, and finally he started yelling, help, help, anybody help, help, help me out of here. And it just so happened, at that time, Owl was flying back to his nest to sleep for the day, and what did Owl's like to eat but habits? Yes, very good little girl. <laughs> Owl saw him squirming, heard him yelling, and Owl swooped down and took Rabbit's ears and pulled out, pulled out, pulled out, until his ears became long and floppy. But his tail was still stuck. Owl flew off finally, just saying, I can't get this done. But as his cries went out and his screams were heard, some of his bunny friends and relatives came hopping in to help him, and they pulled one, and they pulled two, and they pulled three. Oh. Rabbit was free, but he had a short, fluffy tail, as opposed to a long, beautiful tail. And all the rabbits were looking and going, wow, look at that. Look at that tail. That's, that's actually very nice. I've never seen a tail like that. And then Rabbit said, oh, yes. I meant for that to happen. And so from that day forward, all rabbits, as we know today, have those short, cute little furry tails and the long, long ears. And that's the story of how Rabbit got his tail.